Hey guys, it's Gonzalo Tillman again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you all more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm gonna be doing another video on augmented reality. We're gonna be focusing on AR Foundation and someone in the community asked me, Dilmer, could you do an example where you could actually lock an object from being selected and therefore you can't really move the object around. So that's basically what I'm gonna be showing you in Unity. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today, which is to look at the implementation that I have on locking an object. So the object that I'm gonna be using is going to be basically the statue of Albert Einstein. So what I'm gonna be doing is moving it around and then when we press this button right here that says unlock, which is gonna toggle as you press it, we're gonna therefore lock the object from being selected and therefore you can't really move it around. So what I wanna show you is a demo of what I have and that way you can see it running and then once we have it running, we can jump back into Unity and look at the implementation. So right now I have this in my room. You can see that I have the object selected. The object is currently set to unlock and now the object is locked and I'm trying to move it around and I can't move it around. It's hard to see because of the touches, but at this point it's unlocked. Uh, so now I'm changing it to lock and you can see that I, I can't really move it when, it when it's in that state. So if, you, if you're wondering how to do this, this is actually the video to, you know, to see how that is implemented. So let me go ahead and jump into Unity and show you how that is done. So the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is the implementation and the structure of the actual statue. So, and by the way, I downloaded this statue from the asset store. So if you want to download it, make sure that you check it out. I'm gonna put the link of the asset in the description so that we can give the author the proper credit. So. The, the first thing that I, that I want to show you is the structure of the actual statue. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and remove it from the hierarchy. And then if you download the code, make sure that you look at prefabs because that's where I put the, I put this prefab. So I'm going to click on open prefab and we're going to be looking at the structure. So what I have right now is I'm using text mesh pro to, for the text that I have above. So this is just a simple text with, you know, just a label on it. I normally put brackets just to, you know, to resemble that this is going to be replaced by an actual by an actual text. So that's what's inside. And then outside, what I have is a sphere collider. And then I have a script that I created, which is called the placement object. If you watched the previous video, you're probably familiar with this. And then this just has a reference to the overlay text. And then also a Boolean that determines if this is lock or not lock or if it's selected or not selected and also the text that is displayed on the overlay gets put into the string. So that's basically that. And I also have that for, you know, different colors. Like if you want to look at the bronze, you can look at the bronze one. And, and these are just all from the, you know, from the asset. They, they actually look really cool. So I was looking for something realistic and this gave me that. And then the last one was the steel. Let's just took a look at that one so you know what that one is. So just a different material. It looks really cool. And then, especially if you're doing augmented reality gives it, if you're looking, if you're looking at lights and if you're looking at reflections, it just gives it a really cool look in, you know, in AR. In fact, if we go back to that video and we get closer, you can see as I get closer, how the reflections look in AR and, you know, you can see the text and it's just cool to look at materials when it comes to AR. All right, so let's go back and then show you some of the other, other code or a structure. So the let me just walk you through the hierarchy. So I have a directional line, just like I do in every session, the AR session as well. And then I have the attempt update set to true, a match frame rate set to true. These are things that are enabled by default, so I didn't change anything. Of course, I have the AR input manager, especially because we're selecting the statue. And then I have an AR session origin. You guys know if you look at my videos what this is. And it has that component. Also an AR playing manager because I'm using playing detection. And then I'm just basically using horizontal and vertical detection. So that's what I said to everything. I also have an AR raycast manager because I'm, I'm basically throwing a raycast against the object to determine if, it, if it's going to be the object that is selected because I have only, only have one object. I'm always assuming that the object is going to have a placement object. So 
therefore that's how I use this and then this is a script that basically monitors you know what you're touching on the screen if when the when the actual planes get detected what happens so and then I have a few properties in here one of them is going to be the place free fab this is going to be the object that I'm going to be placing in the scene welcome panel is going to be this one because I need a reference before I can dismiss it also a dismiss button so that I can capture the event and therefore the user can also select it and then the lock button so that we can lock and unlock the object from being selected or moved and then also a reference to the AR camera and then a default rotation so this default rotation I use for a setting an initial rotation on the object you can set this to zero if it gets set to zero then basically it uses the rotation of the object by default otherwise I just change the rotation to what this has I wanted to have the object facing me facing the camera so that's what I set it to 180 so that's basically everything on the hierarchy let's go ahead and jump into the code and you might be familiar with this if you watch some of the previous videos and you can probably see that I have multiple versions for different examples but this one is going to be an update to the placement with dragging dropping controller I already used this in a previous video but I added a couple more properties so that we could lock the object so just to give you an overview so I already told you what the exposed properties were place prefab welcome panel dismiss button so these are all serializable so we can expose them also the default rotation by default I started at zero I left it at zero here because I want the object to basically have the AR default rotation so the object re default rotation meaning like if you create a model in Maya 3D and it has a rotation of 180 and that is the rotation that you import into Unity then that 180 is going to be taken into account otherwise if you overwrite that we're going to be overwriting it with the value that we provide then I also have a reference to the object that I get that gets instantiated so when I expose this play prefab in this case is Albert Einstein we're going to be instantiating it and then using this reference to point to that object I also capture a vector 2 for the X and Y position the AR raycast manager you know what I what that is for so that we can throw a raycast and determine if the object that we're selecting on the screen is is actually indeed a placement object then also I added a property here to determine if you know if I wanted to lock the object or unlock the object so this allows me to basically prevent the object from being locked and this is more of a global in this case I'm just using one placement object but I'm going to show you a different trick if you wanted to work if you wanted to have this work for multiple objects how we can accomplish that the the other thing that I also have is to on touch and hold this is so that I know that we're touching the screen so we can drag the object around also a list of raycast hits so that we know what we are raycasting against and what what kind of objects we are we're basically touching in the environment so on the awake method I get a reference to the AR raycast manager I also add a listener to dismiss bounds so that we know when somebody click, clicks on it so that we can dismiss the welcome panel I also check if the lock button is not null because in previous sessions in previous videos and, and actually other scenes I didn't have these properties so I want to make sure that these works that we're basically making this work with previous versions so this is just a check to make sure that it doesn't throw a null exception and then if, it, if it's being enabled meaning that it has been associated with the inspector then I add basically I call a method so that method is going to be the lock and then I also do the same thing with the dismiss so this is what happens under dismiss when somebody presses it I dismiss the welcome panel when somebody calls the when somebody presses the lock button I call the the, the lock method so the lock method what it does is set uh, is locked to to not so I do a not so that we can toggle it so if this is false it's gonna be set to true if this is true it's gonna be set to false I also get a reference to the text box as it, that is under the the lock button so that we can change the label and then I also check if we have instantiated the placement object give me the placement object and then set the text to be based on the state so if we're lock I'm going to displace on the overlay AR object lock if it's not lock I'm going to play I'm going to show AR object unlock and then for the update method this is similar to what I did before this is just doing you know selection and dragging so one of the things that I change in here is the way that we use the lock so I wanted I wanted these to work with previous versions so that's what I'm setting you know if the object is current is so by default this is going to be set to false 
on previous scenes. So what's going to happen is this is going to be set to false. So this is going to be the default behavior is going to be that we're going to be allowing dragging. So that's going to be basically true by default. But if the object is log, I don't want this to be true, which means that I'm not going to allow the object, the the actual user to set this to you know to to true, because that way they can't really drag the object on the screen. So this is how I'm locking the object. If this is set to false then we're not going to be moving the object around, which is what this piece does. If this is set to false, it's never going to change the position of the object or the rotation. If this is set to true, then I'm going to allow this to happen. So that's what's happening. And I also changed the, the text on the placement object to be, you know, depending on the state. The reason why I'm doing it here as well, because this doesn't happen every time. So this only happens when somebody presses the lock button on the on the screen, but if somebody is actually touching the object, I want to make sure that I change the overlay appropriately. So if the object is currently, you know, set to log, I want to show that message. If it's on log, I want to also change that message. So the other things that I do here is I also use the Raycast Manager in AR to determine if we have basically collided with that object. If we have, and the placement object is null, and I saw the rotation is, is greater than zero, the reason why I'm doing this, like I said before, is because I wanted to change the default rotation. I wanted the object to be basically facing me. So this is what I do to do that. I instantiate the object and I also change the rotation of the object to be facing uh, basically towards the camera. And then if the default rotation is not greater than zero, then I just use the heat post position and the heat post rotation to set the rotation and position appropriately. And then this is basically what's, you know, once you have placed an object on the screen, this is what allows you to drag the object around and also change the rotation. Only when the untouched hole is equal to true. Remember that if I if I if the object is locked, it's gonna set to false and therefore we're not gonna be moving the object around. So that's how I basically accomplish locking up objects. So the other question that you may have, okay, this works for one object, but what if you wanted to do multiple objects? So you can also accomplish this with multiple objects. I added a property on the placement object that is called log. So we could simply change this to, you know, if you wanted to do that on multiple objects, you can say is log, which I have a property here. And let me just make sure that I access the correct one, which is actually log. So you can set this to, you know, based on the based on the behavior, you can set this to log and a log. So you could I could have done this, and in fact, we could just change it here. If it's locked, we're gonna lock it here. And then what you could have done instead of doing a global, kind of a global thing, you could have checked and say, okay, if if place object, in this case it's place object, we can just get, get the component, which is gonna be the placement object. And we can just say if it's currently lock, if this object is lock, then I could return. That way we don't do what we're doing below. So I'm just not gonna do this for this example. We can just keep it simple as we have in just to a global log for the object that we have on the screen. So, but I can do that in the future if you need me to. And that's everything that I really wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching again. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.